Good morning, my St. Paul's friends. When Terry Ma Mathis asked me to do this, I said, no. Over the years, I have been touched and brought to tears by stewardship narratives of transformation from many of you, my personal friends. With brave hearts, you have stood in front of us spilling the most personal spiritual biographies. And I don't have anything like that. And so I said, no. And then I started to think about the rich Christian heritage that I was born into. And it's still growing within me today in this place. Even though I've been at St. Paul's for years, I am an outsider to the Episcopal Church, as many of you are. In a world where church attendance is an anomaly, I grew up going to church, the Methodist Church, the tradition my parents, my grandparents, my great-grandparents were all part of. And in a world where religion is increasingly used as a cudgel, that church was kind, welcoming, and stable. Church was so much like a second home to me that when we fled our own home just minutes ahead of the Paseo Grande fire in 1967, we went straight to the minister's home, knocked on the door in the middle of the night. We were embraced and comforted, even though I threw up all night. I took this love of our church family for granted. Of course, no big spiritual awakening. John brought me to St. Paul's after we met in a folk dance class, and again, there was no lightning bolt moment. A lot of kind people, really great music, that kind of thing. No big story here. But deep inside, I always knew we would return to the Methodist Church. <laughs> right, John? <laughs> sure, not so much. In 1983, Becky and Kathy, my two stepdaughters, came to live with us. I knew I was going to need help. I turned to my church friends for support, and they were there. Are you getting a pattern here? How many times was I going to take this for granted? John and I said yes to facilitating a Kerygma Bible study series in the early 90s. I did it because they needed someone, and I was curious. My mind and my heart were changed about the essence of Christianity as I and all of you, our friends, looked with new eyes at the traditions that we had taken for granted, sometimes with discomfort. At work, as a public servant and as a manager of people, St. Paul's remarkable commitment to love and justice by each of you gave me many aha moments that became a checklist as I reviewed my to-do list each morning on the whiteboard. It changed my life in the marketplace. In outlining all the reasons my story makes a crummy stewardship witness, I began to understand something new and important about my spiritual journey. Most of us walk a long, slow road to God, and we need help. We don't get winged angels. We don't get pillars of fire. We get each other. The joy of how St. Paul's does stewardship is that this is our time to look around and say, yes, go ahead, look around you right now and remember the person who opened a door for you when something in your life was roaring after you. Give a nod to the person across the aisle who gave you a smile and made life a little less lonely and more loving. 
Say yes to the life God is building in you here in St. Paul's right now. And while you're at it, have a little bit of fun. Go to one of the stewardship receptions listed in your bulletin. They're good. They're good. It wasn't until John and I began bringing the girls to church back when they were teenagers that I became conscious of a deep, prayerful connection with the way of God. Up until then, I'd been like a disciple on the road to Emmaus, who didn't even recognize Jesus walking and teaching beside me. And like those disciples, it was only in looking back that I was able to recognize how very present Jesus had been all along. And so, in the end, I said yes to Terry. I would like to share with you a prayer, a blessing, that is part of my family heritage, that reflects the angst at being forced out of Prussia 150 years ago because of economic failures and recurring wars, it brings to mind the horrors of the Syrian crisis today. But it also has the deep richness of Jesus' love and of God's hope if we allow ourselves to help build that hope. We say this as a blessing at family gatherings and at Thanksgiving. For the land of golden sunshine and skies of azure blue, for the hands warm clasp and the friendly smiles, our God, we do thank you. For the right to think and to worship as our conscience bids us do, for the freedom from all tyrants, our God, we do thank you. For the privilege of eating together as we are about to do, for the years of life thou hast given us all. Our God, we do thank you. Like you, I love St. Paul's for its quiet and mysterious reasons as much as for the great revelations. And I choose to be generous, joyfully generous, so that our doors can remain open for those who come knocking in the middle of the night or any time at all. Thank you.